working, um, getting it going as, as fast as we can. Um, just want to kind of tell everyone again, we're, we're, in, we're all in this together and um, we're here to, to, to help the community. And uh, we want you to reach out to us as much as you can. I think you've, I hope you see that we're trying to do everything we can as quickly as we can to be of support. Um, one, one little um, plea I wanna make, um, Katie, I know, and that may say this also, um, we, are, we are proud of the fact that we are getting this emergency loan and grant fund set up as quickly as any, I think, municipal government could. Um, but one of our concerns too is making sure uh, everyone knows about it. And you know, there's uh, even on social media, even in this Zoom call, you know, we, we're reaching a lot of people. But uh, if you all know of of groups that may not be on this, or you know, businesses that may not be as you know plugged in on social media, uh, if you can somehow get out word to them to make sure they're aware of our program, uh, that's a that's a real concern of our of our board. And I just thought I'd throw that out here too to everyone because we all have our own different contacts. So I'll go ahead and stop there. And I'm also happy to answer, answer questions at any time. Thank you, Lydia. Well done. We appreciate that. And we, we too share your concern of wanting to get the information out beyond our own network. And so um, Aaron and I have a call later today uh, with council member Barbara Fushi to do some brainstorming on that front as well. Okay, David Jesse, uh, Vanessa, if you would unmute his line. David Jesse is the chair of the Carborough Business Alliance and he'd like to bring welcome. David? Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, first off, I just want to offer a, a huge thank you to uh, everyone in the town who, who came together to, to work to put this loan together. Thank you for hearing us in the business community and how urgent this is um, and, and Thank you for your, for your follow through so far. Uh, it's very much appreciated. I also wanna put out a huge thank you uh, and appreciation to, to Mr. Tom Rayner, who has, who has just come forth with his, with his ideas and his energy. And, um, and it's, just, it's just really inspiring to be around you. And I really appreciate it and look forward to working with you more. Uh, for myself, uh, I continue to try to be relevant. Um, I've been reaching out to several different members of the of the business community and different uh, aspects of of the business world. Uh, it's it's so overwhelming at times. Ha having in our attempts to to flatline this virus, we've had to flatten the economy, um, and that means everything needs to go flat. So there have been some very very difficult conversations. I'm as as a as a property owner. That makes me a landlord. It's been it's been um, it's been really challenging. Uh, I, I feel like everyone needs to make sacrifices right now, and so so in an effort to flatline everything, I've been pushing to flatline all expenses, and that's where I've been coming from. And um, I just I continue to do what I can to to reach out and and try to um, share information as I get it um, to keep uh, everything all information current as it comes, our landscape keeps changing underneath our feet. And I think the most important thing right now is that, is that as information comes that we're able to share it with everybody. Um, and from that, I'll, I'll pass it along. Thank you, Katie. Great, thanks, David. Um, and also a quick uh, check, Vanessa, I wanna make sure we're recording this because for those who weren't able to join the call, we're gonna make that recording available because we think there's some really important information that we're gonna be sharing today. We are. Yes. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Aaron Nelson, President and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Chamber for a Greater Chapel Hill Carborough, uh, to give us an update on the state of play. A lot has happened just in the last 24 hours, let alone what's been going on over the last few weeks. And Aaron has done a phenomenal job of tracking that and he's very good at sharing it in a condensed summary. <laughs> so Aaron, uh, if Vanessa, if you could unmute his line, Aaron, take it away. Thank you, Katie, and thank you everybody for joining us. It's good to have you all uh, here today. Um, it has been an extraordinary two weeks. It's hard to believe that just two and a half, three weeks ago, we were thinking that there was gonna be an ACC tournament and the NCAAs and schools were still open and um, here we are. So let me share a little bit about what I know and hopefully this will raise some questions that we can discuss throughout the meeting. As you guys know, uh, Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools uh, were uh, closed. At first, they were given a three-week spring break through April 6th, but now students are not gonna return until May 15th. Um, 
And uh, there are some questions about uh, whether what the May 15th date will really allow people, but people will come back at that time. Our university uh, extended their spring break, um, left campus open for people to return to, uh, but over the last week, uh, the university has closed campus. In fact, they have changed people's key fobs and one cards and faculty can't even swipe into buildings. Um, and as of late last week, the campus is pretty much closed. There are still a thousand students on campus, uh, mostly international students or students without anywhere else uh, to be. Uh, many of the students that live in our community have remained, uh, though they, uh, some also, as you guys have noticed, have uh, returned home. Uh, graduation has been postponed. We will not have a May graduation. If you were looking forward to that to be a bolus or a bump in our economy, uh, that will be delayed. There are some conversations about a late October, um, but there's nothing uh, firm or final on that. As you guys know, the governor has been issuing orders that have had big impact on our businesses. Uh, the first one, as you remember, just a week ago was that restaurants, dining rooms, uh, bars were ordered closed. Uh, this left um, many of our local restaurants to really try to figure out how to behave. Everybody has been testing new models. Uh, some people going to curbside, some people closing temporarily, some people announcing closing for the indefinite uh, future. Uh, effect yesterday at 5 p.m. Um, all personal care and entertainment businesses were ordered closed. That's barber. So on the personal care, barbershops, nail salons, uh, tattoo parlors, massage parlors, spas. And then in the entertainment side, um, yoga studios, um, workout facilities, all of them were ordered closed by the governor. That took effect yesterday at 5 p.m. Long-term care facilities, which Carborough has uh, two, I think, continuing uh, care, uh, have been incredibly restricted in terms of who can visit, who's allowed to come and go, um, and really discouraging all uh, activity happening there. A word about what's happening at our hospital and healthcare. They have now moved to a one visitor per patient, and I think that that will be suspended here shortly. They've suspended all elective surgeries. Uh, and are uh, preparing for what they see as a bolus of, or a big uh, surge. They predict the surge coming in three weeks. Uh, the upside of our flattening is that many of us that would have gotten sick won't. Uh, the downside of our flattening of this curve is it's pushing out the surge. So the surge that they expected to come earlier is now uh, probably projected to come later, though not as intensely. Uh, they believe now peak won't happen until late April or early May. So that is still four weeks away for us uh, to see peak. Um, the governor made a couple other changes that are really important. Um, we got a question about this from one of the participants here, and that is uh, how unemployment works. So five big changes to unemployment. The first one is that unemployment is immediate. It used to be that your employee would have to wait for a while before filing. There was a waiting period. Now uh, they will be eligible the date after termination or layoff. Uh, the second thing is that your account will not be charged. So traditionally, if you had laid off an employee, that would go towards your account and it would raise your unemployment insurance rate. Uh, that is not the case. None of your employees who file for unemployment will be credited uh, to your account. Uh, the set third is that the employee does not have to look for work. Before, they would be, have to be actively job searching and prove it in order to get the benefit. Now they may just wait for uh, you to rehire them, if that's the case. Uh, Last two pieces, you don't have to be terminated in order to file for unemployment. This is a radical shift. It's kind of hard to wrap our heads around, but the reduction of hours makes somebody eligible for unemployment. So if they were working for you for 40 hours a week and you've taken them down to 10, they may file for unemployment on the making up of the wages between those two. So you do not have to let them go for them to file for unemployment. Last piece is you can be a solopreneur, an independent contractor, a 1099, and a gig worker, a good, you know, a band member, and file for unemployment. Uh, this is the first time that we've added them into the unemployment system, and they can also claim lack uh, or lost wages. The wages will be determined based on what you earned in the previous two quarters. So if you were a gig worker who was not reporting any income to the government, you may have a challenge. Um, but if you were filing uh, annually or you were um, filing your quarterlies, um, but either way, they should make application. Uh, so also should you, if you are a business owner, you may not file. Uh, business owners are not eligible uh, for unemployment insurance at this time. The maximum benefit is $350 a week. North Carolina is one of the worst in the United States in terms of uh, that benefit. 
Uh, so the maximum is $350 a week. Asterix, uh, the bill passed by the Senate yesterday, approved, should be approved by the House on Friday, um, signed by the president. The quick read has that they will add $500 per week to the state's benefit. That makes it an $800 a week benefit, and that is now a substantial unemployment benefit that may change your mind about whether or not it is better to keep your employee on your payroll or to put your employee in the federal or state payroll system. More on that, please be patient. Three days, two days, we'll know a lot more about what's in that bill. Um, senators are voting for it and they don't even know what's in it, so we'll know shortly what's in that. Aaron, we're actually getting a few questions on unemployment. Do you think it makes sense to take a moment to unpack this more? Do you want to hold on that? Yep. Um, do you, what was the, do you want me to answer? The, uh, yeah, we got a question of if, if someone's on payroll, if they're still on payroll, you're saying they yes. can still file for unemployment with reduced hours. Is that right? So Scott, who asked that question, yes. And doesn't that seem counterintuitive? But that is, by all explanation to me, that a reduction of hours, and I read the governor's order. Um, if you're a geek on this stuff, you can go to the governor's webpage, all his orders, there they are. Uh, and if it says that if you are, a reduction of hours makes you eligible. So yes, still on your payroll, but used to be making whatever, 40 hours a week and now 10, uh, they can file for unemployment. I also see a hand raised from Ginger Yancey. Do you have a question that you would like to pose? And if so, um, Vanessa will need your help to unmute her line. Ginger, you're ready to go. Thank you. Um, I know this is hard for everyone. Um, we're gonna get through this. <laughs> um, I have a business for six years called Nourish Inside and Out. I'm a skin therapist, esthetician, so I touch people's faces for a living. Um, not a real good profession to be in right now for pandemic. Um, and I've, I've been in Carborough for six years and um, I have had, you know, significant income. I've done very well. Um, I'm very grateful for the community. Um, I love what I do. Um, I just bought a house uh, five months ago um, in Pittsburgh and I'm single and self-employed, or excuse me, you know, I'm self-employed. Um, I don't have a partner. Um, I don't have family here. Um, so I feel very vulnerable and, um, I'm concerned. So I, I applied for the car, but you, you're probably going to get there, but, um, I applied for the Carboro disaster loan or whatever you call it. And after I applied, I noticed I was kind of, you know, in that anxiety state of not really being thorough. And after I applied, I, I looked again and saw that it was two empl employees or more. I think is what I read that can apply. Um, so that's my question. Is cool. that correct? Yes. And so there's going to be lots of options out there and that one may not be the best one for you. So there will be some that'll say you have to be a startup and some that say you can't be a startup and some that will say three employees or more. Carbro made the choice um, and Manette will describe it in a moment. Um, but I want to talk in a minute about SBA, uh, economic injury loans, and that may be a better place for you. Um, yeah, I did um, begin that process, and there was something in the paperwork that, and I, I actually was going to email them this morning to clarify, and there was something about a $2,500 fee. No. Okay, good. No. Is that so, being waived, or what was that? There is no fee. It could be that you, so... Um, I've not heard of anybody running into any fees. Okay. I would caution there are some people taking advantage of today's situation and yeah. making sure that you're really on the SBA site. If you were on the SBA site in the last 18 hours, then you were not on the SBA site. It's been down. Um, it is back up today. They took it offline. It's now back. It should look a little bit different, but um, the economic injury loans Mm -hmm. We're happy to help offline to talk to you, but I'm going to go into some detail about them. They're designed well, exactly for you. Thank you. I have one more question because I yeah. was forwarding that to my um, accountant to help her uh, have, have some assistance. And then she told me that that's, we're no longer doing that anymore, that there's a new bill passed and we're supposed to apply through our bank. So I called Coastal Federal Credit Union and they didn't know anything about that. 
So the bill, happy to address all of those. Let yeah. me go through, we'll hit those because I imagine that those are many of your questions. Okay. I should say, Ginger, I'm glad that you interrupted that. Sometimes I can, as you can imagine, I've been telling this story about what's going on with our businesses to lots of groups. We've had a group of restaurateurs, a group of downtown Chapel Hill. And this is our, for me, a, a, a maybe my 20th telephone call in the Zoom format of describing it. And so forgive me, I was describing it pretty dispassionately. And I, this is your life. <laughs> we know that. And we, um, uh, we really respect and appreciate that. And so forgive me for if I felt like, uh, I don't know, that I was just rattling it all off. And uh, the reality is, this is super personal and important. And I want you to know that we know that and that we'll be working with you to help on that. So thank you, Ginger, for that. And Aaron, yeah, I recommend press on, but we do have a few more questions about unemployment. So I say proceed and then we'll move to that. I did see about owners. Uh, generally, if you're the business owner, you can't do it. Sometimes the business owner employs their spouse. So the spouse is getting a paycheck. That one's also a little bit complicated. But as the owner of the business, even now, if you're giving yourself a W-2, maybe you are eligible for unemployment. But if you're simply taking income from your business, uh, generally unemployment is not where you will find your relief. Um, regarding loans, so economic injury loans. The SBA has set up a system, um, and when the system is working, the website is working, these should be fairly easy to apply for and really an incredible benefit. First, you may borrow up to $2 million. You should do the math on whether you can afford that, but it is zero to $2 million. The interest rate is 3.75. It is a 30 year amortization. So it's spread out over a long time, very different than most commercial loans. There is no payment for the first six months. Um, if you're borrowing less than $25,000, there's no collateral. So you get 25,000 from the feds on a loan with no collateral. If it's more than 25, they are super loose on what collateral it is. And in fact, we'll lend it to you without collateral. We ask, may you use collateral that you indicated for a previous loan? And what they're saying is they're being flexible. They're gonna handle millions of applications. The level of scrutiny will be low uh, and they will be generous in how they are determining this. Um, we have a slide deck, which we will share which has a step-by-step -step on how to walk through it. Um, but the terms are great. If you're a nonprofit, the terms are even better. It's 2.75% interest, but with the exact same rules. This is designed to help you with cash flow. You should be borrowing this. Gender, it's perfect. You used to make $10,000 a month. Uh, now only $2,000 a month in revenue is coming in. I should say, not you. If your company was making $10,000 a month, and now only $2,000 a month is coming into your company, you would say, okay, the delta of that is $8,000. I need that made up for the next 10 months. So I'm gonna borrow $80,000. So it's designed to work like that. If you are borrowing less than 500,000, they may even waive your need to file your business taxes with it. Um, they, um, and what we're also told is um, that they're just making it as streamlined as easy uh, as possible. You'll simply put in your previous tax return that may be 2018, right, um, on 17. Um, and then there's a couple other tricks uh, in there. For example, there is no place to tell them how much money you want. So in the narrative section, you would indicate how much funds you are looking for. Again, we have a slide deck. I can talk more about this in a minute, but let me move on. Economic injury loan with the SBA. If you have a current loan with the SBA, uh, please call. One, if it's a disaster loan that is automatically deferred until January 1. If it is an SBA loan through a traditional lender, Coastal Credit Union, PNC Bank, I would make a telephone call to your banker and ask for a deferment. We're seeing deferrals of up to 120 days uh, or longer uh, with no hassle. Call and ask for the deferral and they're giving you the deferral to stop making payments on that. If your loans currently have nothing to do with the SBA, still call your banker. Ask them for a deferral. We're seeing that for 60 days up to 120 days. Many banks will go interest only for the next six months. Your bank's gonna be super flexible with you. Um, more lending is coming. $2 trillion from the federal government is coming up. 350 billion of that will be to support small businesses. Um, and uh, the details of those things will be coming out 
shortly. Those will be the traditional lending ginger where you go through your bank in order to do it. But there's gonna be lots of options, borrowing directly from the SBA online, borrowing from your bank using an SBA backed loan. And then a third option is gonna come out. Y'all, the Fed for the first time in 150 years is gonna do direct lending. Uh, more information will come to that soon. We will talk about the other loans. The Carbro created a loaning uh, program. The county just created a loan program, uh, but we'll reach back out on that shortly. The last thing I want to say is that we know um, that many of you are trying to make choices about whether to stay open or whether to let employees go, to keep them with you, uh, and there's no simple answers to that. So this is going to be a balance um, with you taking a look at your options. I'd encourage you to wait three more days or two more days before any big decisions. Let's see what's in this stimulus package to support small businesses. Uh, but we know that many of you have been doing layoffs and closing now. We have several hotels that have already closed in our community. Uh, we estimate it's probably 2,000 layoffs happened in Chapel Hill and Carborough over the last five days. Um, 125,000 people filed for unemployment in North Carolina uh, just in the last a few days. In the last 24 hours, uh, economist Mike Walden spoke to us yesterday. Uh, he projects that this is going to be deep uh, and painful, that the impacts will last uh, far into next quarter and the quarter after that. Um, though he's no epidemiologist, he says, um, his belief, though, that we're looking at more of a V recovery than a U recovery. A V recovery is a steep down and then resolved and a steep back up. Uh, a U recovery is a really long place here, down, and then back up, correct? So he thinks it's going to be more of a V. <clears throat> because of the general health of the economy prior to this. This is very different than the recession. No subprime mortgage, no overbuilt housing, and that once we feel safe again, uh, that this will begin to pick up. But he thinks that we won't return to normal economic conditions until a year from now, uh, was his recommendation. Some of you are being super innovative. Tapo Distillery is now making hand sanitizer out of uh, the alcohol that he was brewing. Uh, and is looking to come to market with that. We appreciate that everybody is trying to figure out how to behave in this new normal. Um, finally, I'll say in one hour and three minutes, if it goes as scheduled, Orange County will order a shelter in place. Actually, it may be a stay home order and maybe the mayor would like to speak to it or maybe she's agreed not to speak to it until it's formally released. Um, but Chapel Hill, Carborough and Hillsborough and Orange County will issue a um, stay at home order and um, Madam Mayor, would you like to describe that at all? Um, I don't know if you've made agreement with your peers not to until 10. Um, I can describe it generally. I actually have not seen the final version. Uh, we worked on drafts over the last several days, um, but it's still making its way through legal and emergency management. Uh, it's very similar to other stay at home orders we've seen from across the country. Uh, honestly, I do, I, I think in Carborough, Ch Chapel Hill, in our area, we've largely been following a lot of it anyway. Uh, the gatherings of 10 or less, I think less than 10 is, is one of the major differences, but uh, look at it carefully because we, um, we, we consulted Aaron with people like you and Sheriff Blackwood and other folks as we, as we crafted it to kind of have that fine balance between being smart about not having non-essential businesses open. And of course, a business is essential to everyone. So that's like a hard call, but also, recognizing that this is the way we kind of control this virus and will help us get through it sooner than later. Thank you. The biggest impact in our community is it will essentially close all retail. Um, all what they will describe as non-essential retail. So Fitch Lumber will stay open because they are servicing a construction industry and other supplies. Um, construction may stay open, lots of things. When you see it, it's a long list of what may stay open, but what may not stay open is general retail. So uh, it will be pretty clear that, so uh, places like uh, Sophia will have to take a look at what this means about whether you can, um, it, it will really say that people ought not to be out to be doing anything other than essential activities and uh, retail is the principal thing uh, that it will have negative impact on. It will not take effect immediately. It probably takes effect, I've not seen it either, Friday at 6 p.m. That's tomorrow, 6 p.m. But be prepared for a 
stay-at-home order that could last for five weeks. Let me say two more things. One is um, the, the end date we put in was April 30th, but yep. we will revisit it as needed along the way. Um, number two is, you know, read it carefully because, um, you know, if you have any question about whether what you're doing can operate under some new model or, you know, if, if you're unsure about whether you have to close or whatever, consult. Uh, I know with the town of Carboro, we're setting up a, a method where we can accept emails and kind of get answers back out to folks who have questions. Uh, restaurants may stay open, grocery will stay open, curbside pickup's still okay, going outside to exercise still okay if it's based on the Charlotte model. But some of you will have questions, like I got a call from a sign shop. They make, they make signs and they engrave trophies. Um, they believe that they are in the essential space. They print a whole lot of COVID-19 signage right now about washing your hands. They're in the supply chain to the hospital. So uh, that may then allow them uh, to be open. But this is, um, I just wanna share that uh, with you. It's coming um, and what you'll need to do as a small business is make some choices over the next 24 hours about if you couldn't return to your place of business, uh, what uh, things you need to think about. Yes, Katie. Aaron, we're uh, we've got some questions. Uh, garden stores, landscapers, any advice as far as how they might fare in this? Correct. So I've read the Charlotte order in incredible detail, uh, and also the Ohio order that it is based on. If you um, want to know, again, um, so at Southern States yesterday, my conversation with him is that he would remain open as a large animal feed store. He has incredible support. So veterinarians stay open. Animal care is allowed to stay open. Auto mechanics allowed to stay open. Um, gasoline, yes, Lydia. Can we keep Lydia unmuted for a moment? I would, I'm, I keep muting myself and unmuting myself. It's okay. okay. Um, I, I think I would hesitate um, to kind of hypothesize right now until it comes out at 10 o'clock. Um, are the attorney team looked at Charlotte, looked at Wake, looked at Ohio, and kind of did, um, it's very similar to a lot of those, but um, I just want to, you know, kind of throw that out there. I think if folks look at it after that, then they'll see if they, how they fall under it or not. And again, the reason I don't want to go into details is because it was still going through a couple of other departments last night and this morning, and I haven't even seen it yet. Uh, that's great advice. I will stop that. Those, uh, what I described to you is the case in, uh, uh, Mecklenburg. In one hour, uh, we should know more about it. And what you can rely on the chamber to do is read uh, and we'll post. Uh, it'll be very detailed. It'll be very, very specific. There's also a process to appeal. Um, uh, there's a form that you fill out to ask to be considered a, a uh, organization that meets this standard and uh, a place to send that uh, to our local emergency operations center will be the one that gives advice on that. They'll send it to the state. The state will decide it comes back. So uh, I can share more about that as we move on. I've taken more time than I had intended, but I know that there are lots of questions. Unemployment is now more favorable, and we think there's new benefits coming. There's going to be lots of lending opportunities and some grant opportunities coming. Um, Pre-prepared to be ordered to stay at home for a period of time and what changes you'd need to make in your organization if you could not go to work. We'll know more about that uh, uh, shortly and pay attention to the governor's orders. Most importantly is stay safe. I have members sent to me, you can dig out of debt, um, but it's really hard. Um, <clears throat> well, she was more draconian about it, but if you fall ill from this process, <clears throat> that could be harder. So um, be careful, be safe, take good care of yourself and your employees and I'll take more questions later. All right, um, Christina, I know you have a question that's not yet fully answered. So just know we're gonna come back to that at the end. And I think Aaron will be our best source for that. So Aaron, in the chat function, if you could look at what Christina sent through. Know, and I'll follow back up. We have good news now to share with you. So that was, my job was to tell you, it's gonna be rough. It is, but we're all gonna get through this. We're gonna work together. Um, those of us that hold on to each other, that stay well connected, that count on our chamber, that use our peers, we will survive this better than those who decide to flop around all by themselves out in the turbulent waters of this crisis. So please uh, continue to participate in calls like this, engage with each other, um, stay positive, but it will be difficult. Um, 
and we're just at the beginning of the beginning. This is not the middle and we're not at the end. Uh, there's more work to do, um, but we'll get through it. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Great update. All right, um, Annette, we're going to go over to you. We have Annette is the Economic Development Director for the Town of Carborough. Vanessa, if you will help unmute her line. Annette has worked tirelessly and incredibly thoughtfully on this new emergency loan and grant uh, fund program out of Carborough, and I'd like for her to be able to walk us through that. Annette? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Aaron and Katie and, and Mayor uh, Lavelle and David, for everyone who spoke and, and everybody's thoughtful uh, concern and, uh, for this. And I'm, I'm happy to see we have 50 participants here this morning. So welcome everyone and I hope everyone's doing well. Um, the, uh, over, over the past several weeks of things have evolved, we started working to try to put together this program. So it has evolved as these past few weeks have gone by. Um, and the town council approved a program on Tuesday night. So thank you all for doing that. It is up on the town's website. And I think that Vanessa is gonna be able to share that link for you. Um, it is a small business and nonprofit emergency fund. The purpose of the fund is to assist Carborough based businesses. So that is if you have a, a location in Carborough and nonprofits that serve Carborough uh, with short term payroll um, during the state of emergency in order to maintain employees. And I, I find it really interesting as I've joined in calls and conversations have flowed over the past several days <clears throat> is that, you know, keeping money flowing through the economy and in people's pockets, everybody's pockets to keep things rolling really seems to be the common message that I'm hearing. And that was what our town council very thoughtfully uh, asked us as staff to focus these funds on uh, employment and keeping and keeping people employed, even if it's a partial employment as um, Aaron pointed out that you could have reduced hours and also apply for unemployment. So um, on the website, when you look, there is uh, the minimum requirements to apply. Um, again, a Carborough-based business or a nonprofit that serves Carborough. Um, preferred that we, you know, you've been in business at least three months, but we'll, but we'll be looking at that. Um, at least we are asking that you have at least two full-time uh, equivalents. So you could have several part-time, but once you put all their hours together, a typical, I think it's 37 and a half or 40 hour week is uh, equals one employee. We are, um, because these loan funds were originally tied to job creation and retention, we're, we're, we're doing that. So we're saying uh, per full-time employee, you can uh, ask for $7,200, which is um, per employee with a maximum of $25,000. Uh, we will be looking at your individual, as part of the review criteria, we'll be looking at your individual credit score. We are uh, really trying to help folks who uh, had positive cash flow up to a point and then all of a sudden the bottom fell out from underneath them. And we will be asking, uh, we're not looking for um, physical collateral, but we will be asking for a, a guarantee signature. So, um, so that's to, to the extent we're collateralizing, I'm learning a lot of banking terms. <laughs> to the extent that we're collateralizing this, it is with a personal signature. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, so then how to apply, and again, this is, uh, I'm reading from the website right now. So this is exactly on our website. Um, we've created a short, uh, easy to fill out form that you submit online and it'll ask you some basic questions about your business name and address and employees and such. And then we'll ask you to describe how the pandemic has impacted your business and how you are working to retain employees and continue to keep people employed. Um, so that's the form, you submit that. Um, and once that has been submitted, and I've just updated this this morning also, because I'm working with our, our finance director and our town attorney to make sure that we're asking you just the, the information that we need to assess. Um, it's at the top, I see that she's got that. Yeah, she's going there, great. <clears throat> that um, 
just the, the information that we need to uh, assess the loan request and, um, and to, um, to, to provide information to the review committee that is being uh, created um, and to give them the information they need. So we'll be asking for a, a credit report, year-end quarterly financial statements, um, pay, some payroll information, and some bank statements. Um, again, this is, no, that's not that one. I don't know, is that Vanessa going there? No, go to the very top. See that the very on the purple side to the left, that small business and nonprofit emergency fund. Click on that. Nope, nope, not up there where your finger is. There you go. That's it. <laughs> okay, great. And everybody will be looking at exactly what I'm looking at. So that this sorry, is my mouse got stuck. <laughs> okay, great. So this is exactly what I'm looking at, and it's on our town website. And um, so. Again, uh, the, uh, we will be collecting the first round or every, I mean, we don't know how many rounds there'll be, if there might be just one round um, of uh, applications. Um, we'll be accepting applications up till April 1st, so that's next Wednesday. Um, and during this week, as you've applied, you'll start hearing from me and asking uh, for this information, and I, we have now, I'm working with IT, we will have a secure way for you to submit this uh, information to us. Um, the, we as the, the, re, the staff review, which will be myself, the finance director, and the um, town attorney, will uh, analyze the information, do an executive summary, and send that to the review committee, who we are anticipating getting a package to them by April 3rd and then have them meet by April 6th and um, hopefully be able to disperse contingent on loan documents and everybody sign in and signatures and, and all those kind of things, be able to disperse um, monies by, I think it's the 8th, I'm not looking at a calendar right there. So that's, and, and we'll continue to roll in that manner for, you know, as long as we have funds. So. And then, it, so at the very bottom of that, um, Vanessa, if you'll scroll to, the, scroll to the very, very bottom of that page, yep, you'll see an apply here button. And if you click on that, um, that, that takes you directly to that form. There's the form. And uh, so you fill that out, you submit it, it, it comes to the town and we'll start, begin, we'll be contacting you soon. So I think I've, I think that's it. I think I've stepped through the process. Yep. Great job, Annette. And again, we thank you. We love that this is available for um, our businesses, small businesses located in Carborough, as well as nonprofits that serve Carborough. So um, folks, apply now. Well done, Annette, turning this so quickly. And what's interesting is the same night that the town of Carborough approved this fund, the Orange County government, our commissioners approved another fund. Um, that opened, I believe, yesterday. It has $300,000. And from what I hear, there's already more applications than the fund can provide. There is such a need for these types of funds. But if you have not applied for the county program yet, that is for small businesses. Um, apply for that one as well. Annette, is there anything you want to share about the county's program that you're privy to? Um, just that they have, there's, there's also a form that you're submitting online. Um, I think their application's going to be open. Um, I, I, I there, yeah, there, there's, there's going to be a little different where they're going to accept, you know, more applications for a longer period of time. Um, and I think that they're looking at distributing funds a little further out. Great. And, uh, Vanessa, as we, move along. If you're able to pull up the county's fund website for us, that would be great. I think you have the link in the, on the PowerPoint. So, so I checked a couple days ago. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know. Um... Great. Erin, is there anything you want to add about these funds? And you'll need to unmute. Thanks. So Annette, I'm gonna imagine that you and the county will communicate with each other um, about who's applying to which. I don't know whether or not you'll decide that if you get one or not the other. Um, it is possible, so right, this is new and we're working on it as fast as we can. Annette, again, I thank you to you. The town council approved it and by the next morning, 
it was already online and you were uh, prepared to take applications. Sometimes we complain about slow government. This is not an example of that. <laughs> I think you're the first in the state of North Carolina municipality uh, to convert it. And a uh, special praise to our uh, Tourism Development Authority who put in $175,000 of their own reserve account into this revolving loan fund. Um, but again, to what Ginger was talking about earlier, there's going to be lots of options. You'll need to think about what is best uh, for you. Um, and I think this is a good option for maintaining employees for a period of time. Great. Thank you, um, Aaron. I am sharing at this moment a link to the county's new small business emergency fund and uh, Vanessa has that on the screen as well. So their portal is also live. Uh, so these are two local resources available for you all. Um, please take advantage of this. So for those of you that may be trying to furiously take notes or uh, you can certainly cut and paste from the chat function here, but on the Chambers site, right, we're overwhelming you. And, uh, you know, it's, you can only absorb so much information, plus you're in a bit of life panic, so you can't even hear it and process it super well. Mm -hmm. So the Chambers, carolinachamber.org, COVID-19, just Google Chamber COVID-19, Chapel Hill, I'm sure you'll find it. It's all there. We've got this working Google Doc that we update every couple of hours uh, with new information. You can go in there, find all this. The links are hot. They're right there. The slide decks are there. Um, we're trying to create um, some real options for you here. Uh, this is this meeting is to, um, to, to let you know what's available uh, for you to then go do a little more looking. Council Member Gist, I see that your hand is raised. Vanessa, if you'd help her unmute her line, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. This is just a very, very quick question that I got from, from a local nonprofit this morning who said that they had submitted an application, but she wasn't sure if it had gone through. Is there any kind of um, thank you for your application or any kind of um, verification that the application went through? Um, the, it, it should go to a confirmation page. The way um, when I set up the form, the option right. was that it goes to a, con and if it, so if it didn't go to a confirmation page, she may need to submit again. Thank so, you. Okay. Thank you. I'll let her know that. That's great. All right. We, and again, we will have um, more Q&A at the end of this call. So if we don't get to you on this topic, please know we'll, we'll be looping back and Post your um, questions and comments on the chat line too. We're keeping an eye on that. Now I want to uh, switch gears and go to Zoe from Acme. Uh, Zoe and a few others have put together Carborough United, and this has really knocked our socks off. Um, the swiftness, the thoughtfulness of it. Um, Zoe, Vanessa, if you could help unmute her line. Zoe, we want to hear from you. We want to hear more about this. I don't hear, I'm looking for her. Let's see. You are unmuted Zoe, but no sound. All right, well, let's move along and then we'll come back to Zoe. She might've had to step away for Carver United. <laughs> um, Aaron, do you wanna say a bit about it before we move on? She is working on her audio. I see her there uh, trying to work on that. While she comes up, can I just answer a few questions that I've seen come through? One regarding your mortgage. So I was using words loosely. There's commercial debt, which I was inviting you to call your banker uh, to talk about extending or finding a period of time with no payment. Your mortgage for your house, uh, once the president signs this $2 trillion deal, it says that all federally backed mortgages uh, and that's almost, that's 90% of all mortgages. They will have an opportunity for abeyance or forbearance, I think they're calling it. And that is if you have lost revenue or being negatively economically impacted, you'll be able to request a two month um, forbearance. That is just not available yet. So if you've asked for that, it's just not here quite yet. Zoe, can we hear you yet? I see her, but I'm still not hearing her. Is there anything, Vanessa, you can do to help her with her audio? 
So my recommendation would be is that if you exited out or just on your cell phone are able to dial into the number that was on the link mm -hmm. and try to go through that way. And while we're navigating that, Tom Rayner, are you still on the line? Because I'd love to toss to you. You've been involved with Carver United and you've done um, quite a bit recently. We want to hear what, what your perspective is and some resources that you can share. Am I unmuted? You, you are. sound great. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Um, I'm Tom Renner, and uh, I am working on the Carver United uh, Emergency Financial Impact Fund. Uh, I have some first the bad news. Uh, the bad news is that uh, two weeks ago we had uh, unemployment numbers of 210,000. Uh, last week we had 287,000. Uh, they just announced the numbers uh, this morning. Three million people apply for unemployment. There are 37 million people whose jobs are risk, at risk. So those are the numbers. And now the good news. Um, we started the fund uh, last Wednesday. We have a 24-hour turnaround. Uh, this is not the entire list of people, but on Sunday, we are going to announce the people that have been awarded the the first uh, $10,000 gap loans. And Johnny's Gone Fishing, you might recognize some of these people. Neil's, uh, Creative Event Strategies, Tide Station, and Open Eye. So those are the first that will be there. Uh, we are working with uh, epidemiologist uh, Peter Gilligan. He's uh, coordinating all of our health and wellness uh, and safety uh, formats and protocols that we're using and also he will be part of my update on Carver United which will go out on Sunday and I appreciate everybody who who has uh, contributed to the things we've done I will not thank everybody who's worked hard on it because that would take the remainder of my time um, if we are obviously battling a pandemic but the reality is we are fighting a war for more one paradigm. We need to win kindness and empathy. We need to win the war on decency and equity. Uh, I remember watching uh, Robert Kennedy uh, on television right before he was assassinated. And uh, Robert said, if not now, when? If not who? Us. And that's a very important message. I also wanted to announce that uh, as of today, we pledged to put $50,000 back into the local economy by dealing with uh, vendors in town. And uh, this afternoon at the Food Hub, uh, 12 o'clock, you'll see one of our first expenditures, although we've had a lot so far. Um, one of those will be a, a branding a message on uh, Carver United. And we hope you'll come by the hub and I'll turn it over so. Great job, Tom. Wonderful update. One of the things that um, I'm observing is that while other communities are boarding up, Carborough isn't going down without a fight. <laughs> and Carborough United is case in point. Zoe, I think we've got, got you on the line. I'm hearing a bit hello, of it. Hello, hello. Yep. Hey. Zoe, if you could mute your computer and we'll just talk to you through your phone. That should do the trick. Okay, Zoe, tell us about Carver United. Um, I, uh, I don't want to repeat anything. Sorry if I missed a couple bits of Tom's piece there. But um, yeah, so Carver United is this um, uh, single platform to sell the food and uh, prepared foods and produce of lots of Carborough businesses. Um, and we've had a tremendous amount of support so far, which is really amazing. Um, we, uh, Tom may have said, we served a thousand meals on our first day, 50% um, more than that on our second day. And um, after I speak here, I'm gonna go walk over to the Cat's Cradle parking lot to do our third day. Um, we uh, sold out last night um, several hours before the the cutoff um, and uh, we're um, we have lots of ideas of how to 
you know how to how to keep it going um uh i think it's um um uh what should i say i mean it's people the people that have come through um are just so supportive and and happy about what's going on um I see a lot of people that I, I believe are staying in their houses, being willing to come through the hub. Um, and uh, people really want to be spending money locally that, that resonates um, as an important thing to do. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, you're, so you're going through the menu. Um, we just, for this hub day today, um, we have our first um, produce boxes. So Peregrine Farm, um, Alex and Betsy hit from the farmer's market and then a um, Ha River mushroom box um, and then meals from uh, restaurants, a number of who are on this call right now. Um, so um, what else? I guess we're, we, we have a great video that helps to sort of intro um, other communities to what we're doing. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests from, from cities around the country, towns around the country that are interested in doing a similar model, um, including Durham, Hillsboro, Wilming, you know, all over North Carolina, um, up into Maine, you know, all over the place. Um, and I think that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not the thing that will keep all businesses afloat ever. It's not, you know, one big lifeboat that we can all you know, survive off of, but um, I've gotten a number of vendors have said to me, doing this is the difference between being able to pay so and so and not pay them. Um, so I think um, as we grow, it will become a much more reliable source of income um, that uh, that people can can you know count on some revenue to keep um, what's left of cash flow alive. <laughs> you know. Um, in these really hard times. Um, Katie, was there anything else that that I should go into that Tom didn't cover? Um, I guess I just wanna reiterate, this is locally sourced food. So from our farms, getting produced by our local chefs, sold to our local community. It's just defying this, this crisis. We're showing that going local actually can work other communities are taking note, as Zoe mentioned. It's been featured in WRAL. Tom and Zoe have been doing an inc incredible lifting on this. If you're a vendor and you want to get involved, the website carbounited.com has information, and Zoe is your resource for that. Um, Tom, Aaron, any other feedback on this? Just wanted to praise the brilliance is the simplicity, the fact that it's a meal for four, and it's one thing from everybody and it um congratulations uh, your sellout last night was at 2000 units what is your how many did you what's the maximum that you have right now um the maximum is is what we can fit in our our truck right now so um we we're packing it um we have a, a u.s foods very generously donated a, a refrigerator truck um can you hear me? Yes. Uh, and um, uh, so we um, basically, oh, and I'm seeing some of the questions about it, but um, uh, I guess to explain how it works, um, you order online, it's all pre-ordered. Um, you drive up to the Cat's Cradle parking lot, give us your name through the window of your car and go through a continuous traffic loop. Um, by the end of that loop, we will, put your your food directly in your trunk and there's it's so it's contactless it takes like less than a minute to go through the line and um uh it's it's very easy we've gotten people saying oh that was you know so easy so um it it works very well and in truth it um was very simple to set up um and i think other people can do it um the the challenge right now is uh, that I think other people, other towns might find it to be a challenge is that um, uh, just what a difficult time this is that you have to have the people to make it happen. Um, and, and you know, everyone involved is, is really um, 
uh, enthusiastically looking for for solutions. So um, anyway, it's we we've felt a great amount of cooperation and um, and more community really than I've felt in a long time. So it's, it, in that way, it's it's been a really great surprise. Mm, that's beautiful. Um, all right, we're going to switch gears um, to some Q and A group discussion. Um, I've got a few people on deck who have had have posted questions that we haven't fully covered yet. So I want to give heads up to Miles and then Christina and then uh, Nathan um, Millian that we're going to be calling on you in just a moment um, to pose some questions and have some discussion. But first, I want to, um, Vanessa, if you could open up Randy Haven O'Donnell's line. Uh, Council member Haven O'Donnell's joined us, and I want to give her a chance to bring welcome and share any sentiments. Hi, thank you, Katie and um, Aaron. Uh, this is just it's it's overwhelming. I'm 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 overwhelmed at uh, how many folks are online and, and are participating. Um, I you know this this really is uh, an example of for the love of Carborough. And um, I just I wanted to thank uh, David Jesse and folks who are I don't know if there's any other. Uh, economic sustainability folks who are on right now, but uh, March 11th, uh, we brought this to um, the Economic Sustainability Commission. It was on our agenda then to um, to talk about uh, how how we're going to support businesses. And uh, David Dar, our chair, talked about the revolving loan fund. So I want to just have a shout out. Um, thank you, David Jesse, for bringing that to the Carborough Business uh, Alliance. It's um, it's really been a community effort. This is this is what community looks like. Um, the Carborough United. I uh, I've been so impressed with it. I've been sending that information out all over the globe. Our nephew is a chef in Ireland. I sent him the information, so they are. Um, coordinating amongst their restaurant group in Ireland. So I just want you to know your reach is beyond the East Coast. It's overseas. Um, lastly, I, I just want to say that um, Annette and the town staff in um, executing and the council, our council, in um, executing the um, plans for this, uh, this loan it's exemplary. I, I hope others follow the model. I do thank um, Aaron for, for saying, yes, this is hard. This is going to be hard. We have to put it in context. Other generations, our parents, our grandparents have struggled and persevered. We will persevere. Um, so I'm encouraging folks to hang in there, support each other. But as Mayor, uh, Governor Cuomo says, you know, stay home, stop the spread, save lives. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, council member. Okay, Miles, Vanessa, if you could open up Miles's line. Miles, you had a, um, a question or a comment um, a while back and I wanna make sure we get to you. So we'll need you to unmute your line. Perfect. Um, so one thing that <clears throat> got passed <clears throat> excuse me, last week was the Family's First Coronavirus Response Act. I don't know how many of you guys are aware of it, but um, it's basically a, for all companies less than 500 people, um, there's a, basically a bill that got passed about offering 80 hours of uh, emergency sick leave for anyone affected by the COVID-19 and there's basically six conditions of that. I'm not going to read them. Um, but down in sort of the footnotes, there is something that says the secretary of labor may exempt small businesses with fewer than 50 employees. If the imposition of the program's requirements would jeopardize the viability of the business. Um, right now, the way that they're, so there's two ways that you can pay for this. So if so let's say tomorrow one of our employees calls in and says, I'm, 
I'm sick and I've done a virtual visit with my doctor and I'm possibly have COVID-19, then they're not going to come in. Um, as an employer, according to this act, <clears throat> I'm required to pay them 80 hours of emergency sick leave at their full salary starting that day. And then they can choose to use their pay time off um, beyond that. So for us here at Fitch, if everybody gets sick over the next two months, that's about an $80,000 obligation that we would have to pay, um, which is a significant cash flow event for us. So I don't know if there's been, <clears throat> on. then that was on Wednesday that that got passed. It goes into effect April 2nd, but then two days later, the Treasury Department, the IRS, and the Department of Labor said that they were going to make more clear this language about companies less than 50 people and we have 38 employees so we're under that threshold i didn't know if aaron you had heard anything i have been each day checking the irs's web page and some other ones to try to figure out um what the what those extra guidelines are i have not seen any of that i don't know if they are tucking that into the $2 trillion act that gets passed this weekend. Um, the way that they're suggesting you pay for that is that you can not submit your 941 payroll taxes um, on a weekly basis to cover whatever amount of that employee sick leave is. So if, you know, if the, 80, the 40 hours a week costs, let's say $800, I cannot submit that $800 in payroll taxes that week and use that cash for that. So um, okay. that's kind of, I was long winded, but this is now, from what I can tell, this is in effect. I have to follow it as a business owner. Um, and I don't know what that means. The language is not much more clear than that. And there's obviously a very big difference between a 40 person company and a 450 person company whose revenue may be half a billion dollars. So yeah, and a pretty broad brush. It is, and let's take it down even further. If you had two employees and one of them fell ill and now all of a sudden you must pay them for the next eight weeks at 40 hours a week when you might not have been paying them that much to begin with. Um, so here's what I think will happen. This, um, we will seek more clarification. You're right, the clarification doesn't exist. We'll reach up through some national organizations that are paying attention to how this applies. My guess is that companies under 50 employees will be exempt. They've been exempting companies of 50 employees for lots of things, Family Medical Leave Act and a few others. I know we all care for our employees and want to take good care of them, but the possibility that you describe would be extraordinary. Um, so let's see if we, uh, can find out, but for now, I don't think it will ultimately apply to companies of your size. And I'm gonna guess as they run the math on that, they're gonna to have to figure out how to support that even for a company of, of 60 or 70 or 100 employees. I know that doesn't give you a lot of advice right now than to say to hold. If it were to actually happen uh, today, um, I, don't, I don't have good advice for you. Yeah, we'll look into it. It's not effective until April 2nd, which okay. is next Thursday. So let's between now and April 2nd really try uh, to figure that out. Well, speaking of, there had been some questions, what do you do as an employer if an employee tests positive? Um, uh, the health department will know. Uh, they will probably come and see you. They described to me that they will want to investigate a little bit about how often that employee worked, who else they might have been in touch with. This investigation process, which is they're trying to track down everybody that person touched, I think we abandoned that pretty quickly. So pretty soon, they will not have time to go track down everybody that person touched. So it'll be up to you to pay close attention to sanitizing your place of work, to making your own choice about um, staying open and how to protect yourself and your employees. But again, I think in the next week, um, that they just won't have the time to be doing the investigations that they're doing right now. We have 13 positive cases in Orange County right now. Uh, we've had one death. There are six patients at UNC hospitals right now. Great. 
Thank you, Aaron and Miles. Um, I'm gonna go to Christina next. Nathan, Millian, you're on deck. And let me remind folks, if you have questions, you can raise your hand through the raise the hand feature under participants, or you can um, post things on chat. And, um, and I'll try and catch up with who, who we've missed. But Christina? And I don't- What I really wanna say, can you hear me? Yep. What I really wanna say is I, I just can't imagine facing this without this community. I, it's really interesting. I've been asked a lot of times about well, how the pandemic has affected you. I have vendors reaching out to me, which is incredible, saying, how do we collaborate? How do we get through this? And I have 200 vendors and I'm in conversations with them. And it's, it's so beautiful actually to see that really this is about collaboration. This is about supporting one another. And it's bizarre that all the talk is about distancing when actually what's really going on is we're strengthening our relationships. And I, I want to say they thank you, Aaron, for saying I, I, I'm, I feel moved today to reach out to people that I normally maybe would not reach out and bring them into the fold of this support because we, we will get through this together. And there's no need to feel alone and to have that level of anxiety. This group has, this group and all of the beautiful connections to Ireland and beyond are what is weaving a fabric that is the raft, that is this raft that's gonna carry us on these turbulent seas. And so mainly I just wanna thank everybody from the government leadership to our chamber to my small little community at Carmel and uh, all the, the faces and, and, and friends that we have there. This has touched my heart immensely and has actually made me a more um, considerate business person that the role of what it means to be in business from the, the responsibility to staff, responsibility um, as a community member. So I just thank, thank everybody. And uh, my voice is shaking. I feel really powerful, <laughs> powerfully like affected by, by this being able to name it. So uh, I cannot imagine being here without you guys um, and the dark hole that that would feel like, but I feel full of, full of light and I feel full of uh, positivity. And it's made possible by this strong connection. Thank you. That's beautiful. I think you also had an un a question about unemployment. Oh, yeah. I'll make sure we get to that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're the real practical steps. I saw your question. <laughs> the question was about um, if people get 12 weeks of unemployment and you want to pay them for like four weeks and then let them, can you pay them and they get their unemployment? Is that the um it really is so i want all the fail safes like all the all the support networks so in other words if if we receive funding to maintain our staff but they've already filed for unemployment and we say okay no we're gonna maintain maintain you until those funds run out can they then fall back on their employment because as i understand it if they receive pay from me even if it's reduced hours uh, or if it's a full 40 hours then um they could report weekly, right? That they received that income and therefore they wouldn't receive a distribution from, from their un, unemployment. But then they could, when that, those funds would run out, could then the, it kick in. It's gonna, gonna be, it's gonna be messy. It's just, and we're just gonna have to be okay with that. So what I mean by that is, right? You've, re, let's say you release them, they're getting unemployment. Then right. you get a small business loan and you decide that you want to pay them. So you start paying them. Then, uh, you know, should they give back their money? How does exactly that work? I think it's just going to be, I, I think the state does not quite know that exactly. I'm hoping that they're going to be generous and not try to claw back benefits that people have received. Um, but yes, people are going to be in and out of unemployment through this process. And um, I don't have good advice on that other than to try to keep good records. I expect mm -hmm. people at the state to be, they've described that they'll be uh, generous and the feds will be generous with this but you raise a very interesting question because i'm gonna get right you pick them back up for a little bit of work mm -hmm. um now you could choose to pick them back up for work as a 1099 
um, up till five, you can pay somebody $500 without reporting it to the Fed. How about I'll say it this way. After you pay somebody $500 as a 1099, you must report it to the federal government. Um, but how they come back to you as an employee on your payroll, as a contractor, with a bonus, however you want to do that, I encourage everybody to think creatively about that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Aaron. Christina, we'll keep our eye on that. We're, we talk fairly regularly with the, the head of the unemployment work and workforce development for the county, and we'll see if we can get further details for you. Um, okay, I'm, I wanna go to Nathan Millian. Um, let's test your audio. Can you hear me? Yep, Perfect. okay, great. Okay, um, thanks. <clears throat> I, um, I wanted to kind of give you a pers landlord perspective a little bit. Um, there's a number of our, um, actually a number of our, our folks are here on this call. So um, from the various properties that, that uh, I manage around town and, and in other places. Um, the, the, we're getting, I'm getting lots of requests for what's, you know, questions. What are, what, what are you gonna do? What, you know, how, what do you do about our rent? What's the landlord gonna do, et cetera, et cetera. I just wanted to kind of let you know what I'm hearing from the six owners that I represent um, the, uh, it's a little, it, it's, it's a little more complicated in some instances than you might, it might seem with commercial lending, the, um, in addition to the collateral, in addition to the actual property itself, leases are part of the collateral for loans. So, uh, although landlords have fairly wide discretion in how they use that collateral, they're allowed to use that collateral and have discretion in how it's used, but um, they can't just, we can't just say everybody's didn't have to pay rent next month. Um, we, or, you know, or, or everybody's cut like this. Um, so uh, this is un kind of uncharted territory. Um, I've, spoke, I've spoken with all of our owners and some of their lenders directly. Um, uh, the lenders are, or everybody's trying to figure out how to, how's the best way to handle that. That's what, our lenders, our land, my landlords are going through right now. All of these guys are planning to sort of approach um, how they deal with folks on an individual basis. Some people are some we have a lot of office tenants. Some some of those people are are affected. A lot of those people affected. A lot aren't. So there's people that are going to need rent breaks. There's people that aren't. So they're going to take they're going to take each person's uh, each business's circumstances on an individual basis. What, what I have asked all of our tenants, I can't speak to everybody else, but about six buildings around, six properties around, five out properties on Carborough um, are involved here. Um, if, the, if you have a request, send it to me in writing. If, you, if you're in retail, provide me the last few years of sales for the, to make it easy on me, I most likely have them, but last few years, first and second quarter sales, so that I've got something while I'm talking to the owners about your individual circumstances. Um, that's how we're doing it. I don't know how other landlords are doing it, but I wanted everyone to make be aware that that it that it's not necessarily the landlord's complete discretion that they can say arbitrarily, you know, nobody has to pay their rent um, because it's not it's not completely up to them in some in some cases where there's uh, loans on properties. Let me underscore what Nathan, we're hearing that across other landlords, and I hope that makes sense to folks. Um, you don't want to give a, you don't want to say nobody has to pay rent because Nathan would like Harris Teeter and CVS to keep paying rent, and they should. Um, Weaver Street Market. And Weaver Street. <laughs> and, and Josh, he wants you to keep paying your rent. Grocery's doing pretty good. But, the, um, but that makes sense. This is why landlords aren't just saying everybody gets two months off because they have the university as a tenant and they'd like the university to keep uh, paying. So Nathan says, ask him individually about your individual business. And we're hearing landlord flexibility on those one-on-one. -on -one. Nathan, I'm grateful that you're here on this call and uh, Nathan's leadership on the Carbo Business Alliance and in advocating for you all as tenants to the owners. Sometimes Nathan can feel like the owner because he treats the properties like he does own them with that kind of care. But on occasion, you're reminded that uh, they make those decisions and you just have to be an advocate. So thanks, Nate. Mm -hmm. sure. Great. Uh, I just saw uh, Trish McGuire from the town was 
um, posing, a, I guess, more of a wish that there be access to rolling capital. Trish, do you want to unmute your line and say a bit more about what you're hoping? Uh-oh, let's see here. She's posting in chat now. Not. Um, we can't hear you, Trish. Let's see. Um, there she is. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi everybody. Um, I was I was just saying that I'm not from a town. I'm from OCSE. Oh, <laughs> not Trish McGuire. Trish Messigan. Beg your pardon. Yeah. No problem. Um, hi everyone. Best best wishes to everyone. Christina, thanks for your positivity. I agree that I'm just, it brings me great solace to have a community like we do. Um, and I'll probably cry if I expand on that, but um, can everyone still hear me? Because my internet is a little wishy-washy. I was just saying that right now, if, if I knew that we were only needing to close until say May 15th, I can make a plan, you know, deal with it. And so I don't want to pull from people who can't do that right now. Um, as far as, well, I can't do the Carborough loan, but as far as any loans, I don't want to take out a loan because I don't right now need a loan. So I'm just worried if, 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 if my business has to be closed, who, kno who knows that there'll still be um, compassion. I'm sure there will, but it's just the length of time being a question mark is just so makes all of the accounting and all of the payroll and all of the unemployment also a question mark. So I don't really know what my question <laughs> is, but nope. I, that's, that's the, it's the fear of the unknown of, of time how long the business will be closed is just like confusing. You, you, you articulated the challenge of this crisis um, very well. My advice is you run a couple scenario plans. What if I open uh, May 15th? What if I can't open till June 15th? What if I open on June 1, but it's 50% as good as it used to be for two months? I'd run maybe three scenarios of uh, accelerating crisis. Um, your best case, something worse, and then what they call the, the black swan, like as terrible as it could be, plus a little bit, um, and see how you do. My other advice is apply for the economic injury loans. Now, uh, if you just want 25,000 non-collateralized, simple, easy, but I'd ask for the money. Let them send it to you. Don't spend it. Let it sit in your account for uh, three months if you don't need it. There's no prepayment penalty. You give it right back um, if you want. But the terms are such that you'd have no obligation on it for several months. You'd have not to pay anything while you waited to see. Mm -hmm. um, and with respect to that one, by borrowing in the economic injury, you're not stealing from anybody else. Um, there's going to be plenty on that. So you're not preventing somebody so from a greater need. That makes sense? Sorry, Aaron. Is that a... a State, federal, Sorry, I don't know. About federal. The Sorry, the small U.S. Small Business Administration has a thing called an economic injury uh, loan that is available to you. Um, it's a federal disaster loan, and the one you're going to apply for is called economic injury. And um, uh, again, it's a 30-year term, a three and three quarters percent interest rate with no payments for months and months and months, with no prepayment penalty. Um, and a process for which you may not even need to provide collateral. The, if so the internet is, is working, it should take you the interest. Hmm? Say again? Sorry, there is interest though. Yes, but not for months. Um, it'll be a period of time where you owe them nothing. But so let's say you had $100,000 from them and it was in your account and you didn't need it, you gave it right back. Um, within the next six months, I think you'd have very little um, but my advice is to, for everybody to be extending their line of credit that you have, call your bank and make that as big as possible. Um, and then explore this economic injury loan. Again, give it back if you don't want it or give back the portion that you didn't need. But um, 
a 30 year term with that level of interest rate, it will be very small payments uh, until things get better. Mm, I guess what, like grab it. This is like grab your seat belt, f double mm -hmm. check where the emergency Thanks, that's, that's are. Sweet. That's my advice. Thanks, Aaron. Um, it's like okay. having it's like having a home equity line of credit. Basically. Exactly, it will Thank have you. a little bit of interest. That's a good way to describe. It. Tom, mm -hmm. you had some. Yeah, there's an art to facilitation that I'm trying to master, but I had a slip up there. So, Tom, coming to you now. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I just have a couple of points, and I have notes because I couldn't remember it all. So. Uh, just just a couple of things uh we are in uh, the middle uh of, of tsunami in quicksand and one of the reasons that carbro and carbro united will be successful is there is a desperate need for good news desperate actually great news and we have great news as a town um we have to stop calling ourselves small businesses we are independent businesses Ask your employees if they think of you as a small business. Um, I'll just point out a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, we all want to survive, but Carver can thrive in this situation. Uh, part of the money we've spent on local businesses has gone to the merch, loans and tunes, uh, and many restaurants. Uh, we've had people eat every night at Acme, and I should report that uh, uh, the people that I should have uh, mentioned uh, were was Splinter Group. Splinter's done all the PR, the uh, metricing, and all of the uh, collateral material. Uh, we will be breaking out uh, a new program today on branding. Um, I believe Pat at Balloon and Tunes was uh, crying when we gave her a $1,000 order. So if you see the balloons around town, that means we are open for business. Carver is open for business. Um, uh, I will also report to the town council mayor. We actually have annexed Bemela. So Bemela is now a member of Carborough. She'll be providing meals. Um, the towns, Zoe mentioned Charlottesville, Asheville, Athens, Wilmington, Greenville, Knoxville, Birmingham, Durham. Uh, those are the people I will guarantee you that uh, I will be working on Carbro only. Um, Want to cover uh, supply chain? There is a tremendous amount of food on one side of this. The farmers have a lot in the fields, they got a lot invested, and they don't have any cash. So we will solve that problem. On the other hand, this huge demand is not going to go away. The consumer's having a seismic shift in what they're doing. We have to realize that. So my job is to figure out how to expand the pipeline. The pipeline's been very rigid. It's about one inch diameter. We have to make it very flexible and expand the pipeline between the food and the customer. Um, at uh, Carver United, we have eight employees. Uh, we're going to 25 by the end of the month. Plus, we have 18 employees that have been rehired at uh, our partners. Uh, all of the partners are required to pay a living wage and as do we at Carver United, of course. So they do not qualify to come into the program unless they're paying a living wage. Um, let's see, uh, Weaver Street is doing great. Uh, I will also report uh, that we would be trying to take 5% of the business from national grocery store chains and keep that in Carver. Uh, Denise Corey is helping me with the loan program, um, the macroeconomics uh, on the food supply are, we can figure that out, but the microeconomics of Carbro is the really important point. Uh, the closing data uh, that I've seen and looked at on, on the uh, yield curve is that uh, we will not have school this year, uh, we will not be open uh, until June, uh, that's on the metric data that uh, I looked at with uh, uh, an economist that I work with. Um, if you think your business is uh, suffering, think about the cat's cradle. So the next initiative we'll launch is uh, Carbon Music uh, United. 
and we'll be doing that soon. We're going to have music at uh, the pickup on Saturday. There will be social distancing. We'll be enforcing that. And just remember that Carver United likes the world. So that's it for me. Thank you very much. Great job, Tom. All right, we are, we're nearly out of time. I want to go to, um, I think Jackie had a bit she wanted to say. I want to give some closing remarks. And then Annette, I want to also give you a chance to give some closing remarks as the, the co-host um, on this call. Jackie? I certainly don't want to take a lot of time. I want to thank everybody, our staff, Tom, the chamber, Katie. I, I love this community. Um, and I can't imagine being anywhere other than Carborough going through this. I talked to friends in other towns and they're like, Carborough is doing what? Um, so thank you all. Thank you all. You are, um, the Carborough's businesses are what makes Carborough who and what we are. And you're certainly showing that right now. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you to Carborough's staff too. That's all. Thank you. I want to make sure you all know for those businesses on the call today or nonprofits who are not a part of the Carborough Business Alliance, we invite you to join our alliance. Uh, we do calls like this. We have a really active business community and all are welcome. Uh, you can go to carboroughbusinessalliance.com to learn more about our alliance um, and contact me or Aaron or David Jesse. Um, we're happy to speak with you about that. Um, We'll probably be doing more of these calls in the coming weeks and months. Um, visit our website for more information. And we, we, from the bottom of our heart, we thank you. Um, let's all stick together. Annette, any other final remarks from you? Oh, and please unmute your line. Hold on, Annette. We don't have you yet. I'm being in myself. There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, thank y'all, everybody. Um, uh, try not cry here. Um, the, uh, I'm seeing some questions in the chat, and I was just wondering if folks would could just email me directly on that, so I'm not staying in the chat here trying to figure out who I'm responding to. Is that okay? <laughs> if you've asked me a question directly uh, here, you all have my email. Please email me. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Again, this call has been recorded. We are going to post this call um, on social media, on the Carbo Business Alliance website. The town maybe will share it. Um, the chamber will also share it. The chamber has a page that has real-time information. It's carolinachamber.org slash COVID-19. It's a great resource and the CBA will be linking directly to it. With that, I want to thank you all. Wish everyone the best. Be well. If folks would